welcome ladies and gentlemen we're here at the london spirits competition and i'm here with tom Hol- hollywood right absolutely that's such absolutely. a nice name dude. <laughs> that's such a nice name uh, so tell us tom uh where do you work what do you do yeah, so I'm from Oxfordshire, so outside of London, not so much city based, but uh, yeah, I'm from Le Mamre Cap Saison, which is a Belmont hotel in, in Oxfordshire. Uh, yeah, really kind of country style hotel with a, a, a twist on kind of Asian influence, but being mainly a French maison. Um, yeah, run by our chef patron, Raymond Blanc, which mm. is great. Tell me a little bit about working at the Belmont Hotel. I mean, it's, uh, it's not something everybody can do. Uh, no, absolutely. And, and <laughs> Are you, are you one of those that grew through the ranks at, at, at Belmont? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. So I went, I'm very, very local to the hotel. I've always lived about, about 10 minutes away. So going to school locally there as well, I joined on and uh, I joined on when I was about 15. I just turned 15. Uh, oh, I did it part time. Really? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. That long. So I'm nearly, I'm 26 in a couple of weeks now. So it's been- 11 years over, you spent yeah, at that hotel. Absolutely, wow. just, just there. So it's not Fabulous. been, obviously all spirits based. Obviously uh-huh. you can't do that when you're 15. <laughs> but um, yeah, I went through different positions. So front office, guest relations, Absolutely. all of that. Everything, uh, yeah. Is it, was, it, was it part of like a management training program that they have? I did an apprenticeship when I, when I first ah, joined yeah, right, from when I was kind of 15, 16 to when I was 18. And that was a multi-skilled MVQ. So that was finding the ropes on different departments, whether it's kitchen or pastry or Got it. events or revenue management or guest relations, porters, housekeeping, you name it, a bit of everything. I understand, I did something um, very similar. Yeah, it's, um, it, yeah, it's, it's really, really great. And I think it teaches you a lot mm, because you get exposed to so many different departments, mm. but it also like, it, it confuses you in a way because you have to find that one thing that you like exactly, out yeah. of it all. Yeah, um, and it's all it's all interesting. You know, I, I went through different departments, finding them all interesting. How but, uh, is not that how, interesting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's very important. It it's is very important. very important. It is. It is. But, um, but yeah. I don't see you as a housekeeper. No, no, no. I think, uh, <laughs> I, no, I, think I hopefully suit the bar a bit more. But uh, true. No, a very very important part to it. But I went through yeah all the different departments, and I, I fell into the front desk because I wanted to be with the guests mainly. That was my most. Right. Um, kind of uh, my most loved side, you know, looking after the guests and interacting with people. And then after a while that kind of fell into it not being enough for me. You know, I, I looked after the guests, I'd done every kind of situation in the front desk and I thought, oh, what, right. can, what can surround my life? What can absolutely, you know, destroy my mind? And then, you know, spirits came up and with spirits and wines, there's, there's not, you know, you can't know everything. And that's that's true. Thing. There's always more you can learn. So. Tell us a little bit about your beverage program at the hotel. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm head mixologist at the moment. So um, working on our cocktail menu and our, you know, the, the spirits that we have on our menu is, is a massive thing. Um, we're looking at some up and coming projects in the next kind of year, year and a half, some bar changes, which is very exciting. So we're trying to fill the shelves as much as possible with nice. every single category. You know, I would love to be seeing whiskies from all around the world, even you know a lot more from from Wales and so on that we're we're lacking at the moment. And then Asian spirits have taken a, a massive kind of. A what's what's one to. of these unusual spirits mm. that you have that does very well at the hotel? And, and it was kind of a surprise to you as well. Mm. Unusual spirits. Like one you don't really expect to find, but yet it does so well at you. Yeah. Moment. Or perhaps it could be a cocktail mm. that came about as an mm. experiment. Or mm. Do you experiment with your cocktails? Yeah, often? absolutely. Yeah, we're always yeah. trying new things here and there. How's your cocktail and menu like? What's the vision behind your cocktail the menu? The vision. Right? At such an exotic place. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> so, so how do you kind of immerse that, mm. that that uh, that elegance, that luxury mm. into mm. your drinks at the hotel. The, the the hotel was all about stories and and seasonality. And that's the main thing. So like you see in the menu, the menu is divided off being seasonal. You know, like a lot right. of other restaurants out there, but also Raymond's stories. And you know, Raymond's got hundreds and hundreds of books out there already in television programs. So being inspired by his books, reading about his life experiences, where he came from, what he experienced. Um, and yeah, those stories are what then stem onto the cocktail creations. Oh, so wow. his travels to to uh, Southeast Asia, some of his favorite parts, and then stemming that off, some of the produce that he loves and used, because he will taste with us as well. All of the spirits that we get in and the cocktails that we make, he will be alongside to, uh, to make sure they're, they're tip top. Wow. Um, but yeah, I'd say mainly is the stories of Raymond, reading his books, hearing him speak, and then you can kind of get that story in and then you work the cocktail from there. It's not just a blank slate. We always go off stories, and then we work out what we need. So yeah, interesting. interesting stuff, yeah. How what what? How's your supplier relationship like? How many suppliers do you work with? It for because you're you're part of the LVMH group. Absolutely. Right? Mm-hmm. So does that mean that you have to work with their like? their clients or their their whatever contracts they have or their assigned suppliers or do you have a lot of flexibility when it comes to working with 
We've got we've got lots of flexibility. Um, obviously, we, we own quite a few spirits houses and wine maisons that we really, right. really look after. So things like Belvedere, Ardbeg, Glen Morangi, um, Eminente, Hennessy, of course. Great. You know that we're very we're very forward with, and the products that we love the most, and uh, you know are, they are incredible products. So. Yet you can still do whatever you want. Exactly. Yeah, we're very, spirits, we're very very flexible. You know, we we try and work with them as much as we can, but we're not you know, so stuck into them to be, you know, just one dimensional, if you know what I mean. Right. We can go out and we can go to distilleries on our days off and, and find new stuff and that can go on the menu. So yeah, we are flexible. We do have a, a, a large list to do that. We're not just focused on the products that we are owned by, yeah, LVMH. Very which interesting. Is, which is great. They're, they're very, very good at managing that kind of style and, and that's what we want for our guests, you know, a massive selection of, of anything you can imagine. Yeah. You know, yeah. Which, is, which is great. What are the kind of guests that come to your hotel? Um, um, and. and See, I, I want to know a little bit about your your standards in terms of quality mm. because you guys scream kind of quality, you know. You're 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 the the creme de la creme of of the best hotels. Mm. Um, so what's different? Do you ever have conversations with your friends who are not who don't work at this particular hotel, and and you go, wow, our quality is really up there in terms of our assurances, our quality checks. Is mm. that something that happens? Is yeah, drilled into you since a young age? I, also? I think it does, and that's why it's so bad because when I go out for meals and stuff, you, you can't not but point out the bad things. Right. And I do it at work every day. We do a great job. The team are absolutely amazing. We would be nowhere without the team that we have. But every day we are we are always looking at the bad points. And I think sometimes it's good to step back and, and see what's going and be like, oh, you know, we should really appreciate how, how good we are. Can you give me an example of some of these bad points that, that might get overlooked in oh. a normal hotel or restaurant, but um. you guys are just super like, like oh, it's, this can't happen or that can't happen. It's it's how we are with guests is really, really important. So we uh, we have this nice balance and this barrier of being you know, really kind and committed to the guests, but also being really, really natural with them as well, which I find uh, is the struggle in a lot of other hotels and restaurants. They find they're either a bit too, a bit too neat and, and stuffy and like soldiers, or they have the complete other side. So, but to find that fine balance to make people feel very, very relaxed in your own house is, a, is what we do really, really well. And then, for, you know, from other small details, you know, the tiny details of how a lemon wedge is cut, for example, to, to garnishes, you know, they're so, so important. And if it's put in a glass and it's not right, it gets chucked straight out. Right. You know, so we're, how do you maintain that consistency? Lo lo lots of training, yeah. um, lots of checking up. You know, we check each other's work when we're on service, make sure that our produce that we're getting in is, is good as well. So um, even recently we've got in you know, very, very specific oranges, very, very specific lemons just for our, our gin martinis and also for our Negronis and so on, because that peel makes such a difference. Um, giving the team the right equipment as well. Um, giving them the right training is a massive thing, but the, the team that we But have, training is mm, so important. It it's is so the important. most important thing. And yeah. it needs to be consistently done so that it kind of brings that consistency whenever people are doing their actions exactly. also then. Mm. But I want to know this now, is you come from a lot of, you've had experience in many departments. Mm. So revenue has to be one of them. Mm. How are you, how do you manage, how do you create a great revenue uh, streaming bar program or like how do you how do you make money out of this um, we what well, are the things you look at when it comes to saying you know whenever you have that end of the week when your when your general manager calls you yeah and he he's only looking at numbers right <laughs> absolutely how do you make sure that the numbers are there we've got loads of different aspects to the experience that we that we can add to it so for example in the restaurant we have the wine flights which are very very popular um, and we balance out the wines we get which can be at a very very good price but are very, very rare to find, so we can add more value to it that way. Um, cocktails that we change here and there, but to be honest, with where we are, people are, people are more than happy to just come and, and to have a gin and tonic and, and just let us decide, that's the nice thing. But um, yeah, we're very strict with our, with our GPs and how everything stands. Prices are chopping and changing out, which is scary with Brexit and COVID and what's been happening. So prices of everything from liqueurs to the rest that's of the spirits is going up, but we don't want to be unfair to our guests. So, we have to balance it out, but with, with LVMH, with Belmont, with our, with our general manager. Is uh, it difficult very, very to find staff with, for you guys? Uh, at, at the moment, it's been kind of chopping and changing. I think it's been difficult for everyone. For us, we've, uh, we've got you know, Raymond to, to inspire everyone, so right. we are getting a lot of people yeah. in, but it's, it's been changing. Since I was there, I think, yeah, the staffing is definitely, is definitely different. But uh, Fabulous. No, we're, we're finding people. It's You're coming. also a two Michelin star, right? Mm, correct. How is, in terms of your cocktails, in terms of your drinks, how are you different from any other restaurant or bar? What is it that you guys do that gets you that two Michelin? Absolutely. And so, 
Can it's, you tell me a little it's, bit it's, about that? It's the small details. So even going from your ingredients, where you source your ingredients, whether it's it's locally or whether it's part of you know Raymond's vision, from whether it's from France or whether it's from where he's been around there. Um, glassware is obviously a massive thing for everyone. That can be a, a, a hit or miss for, for some restaurants. So um, we're looking into now some kind of specially made glassware for us that you know, Raymond would like to look into and, and make sure it's shaped perfectly so it's unique, you know. Oh, nice. We think, you know, unique does add a lot of value to it. Um, yeah, have, have, having the skills to make a great cocktail, having a shelf full of the, the best liqueurs. Could you and, give and me liqueurs. an example? What's your best selling mm. cocktail? And can you just mm. quickly summarize mm. each of the things that's so, that's unique about it? Yeah, absolutely. Maybe from glassware to, so what, what is your most sold cocktail? Or, or what is your personal favorite yeah. cocktail that you do at the, at the I'd hotel? I'd say the personal favorite that we do is, is this kind of tawny style of an old fashioned. So very, very simple base. So we have a, a lovely rocks glass from Riedel. We get in some lovely block ice that are made, um, uh, in West London from a company called Techni Ice. Great, great guys. So they have measured it out to perfection. So when you do pour the cocktail in it, it rises to the correct level. And when you drink it, obviously it doesn't hit your lips too much. So all those small details behind that block ice. Um, we, we stamp the ice with our own emblem. So we've got an emblem of the front of the house, which is um, also um, on our napkins and in the restaurant, but also a cockerel, which is uh, Raymond's, nice. Raymond's emblem. So it tells a story oh, wow. before you've even drunk it. Um, very, very simplistic garnish, just a, a single maraschino cherry on a, a really nice little stick. And this is, yeah, an old fashioned. So you've got your bourbon whiskey. We use Eagle Rare. Um, probably more an executive pouring bourbon than you'd have. Um, but it's, it's one that we just absolutely love with kind of a, a bit more kind of spice to it than that sweet right. kind of corn flavor. Um, with that as well, yeah, a couple of dashes of Angostura bitters, maple syrup, once again, being a more executive kind of sweeting agent instead of a sugar syrup or demerara. We I can imagine this all in my head right yeah, now. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I know. That's all I want to do right yeah. now is take a sip of this. Yeah. Drink. And then but we use a, a really, really great port. We have a um, um, a double magnum Bordeaux um, tawny port from Fonseca. They're 20 year old. Incredible, incredible port. We've used a few ports, but this one was the, the most rounded, the most nutty, the most kind of these dried fruits. And we just thought for an old fashioned, uh, a classic old fashioned is great, but add a bit more of those, yeah, those nutty and dried fruit aromas. It's just a win win. So we had a a small portion of that, stir it down, serve it in that glass with a nice big block ice. And when you receive it, it's, it's the ice that takes you back That's straight away, you know. It's, right. a, it's a wow factor immediately before you've tasted it. And just a really well balanced, sit by the fire, and being a being a French house in Oxfordshire, you know, we have all, all our fires on, sitting by the fire, drinking that at the end of your meal, it's the perfect digestive. So Is that a certain place where you, what, tell me about the area that you've chosen to serve your drinks and yeah. why have you chosen that particular area? Yeah, so, so with this, uh, we've got two lounges and then our champagne cocktail bar, which is very, very small. This is a, a bar that was, was built when Raymond bought the property in 1982. So, so it was mainly just a, a champagne, Kier Royale, Kier gin and tonic bar. Very, very small bar, probably the size of, yeah, the end of this wall to the end of this wall, you know, oh. really, really small, okay. tiny. It's not a, it's not a very, very long cocktail bar. There's no seats there. So it's more dispensed by how we have it at the moment until, uh, until new exciting plans come up, hopefully. Oh, wow. yeah. So yeah, being a dispensed bar, you have a bartender behind there and then you do have a seating area for around eight people in the bar, but then you've got this lovely kind of traditional classic style of lounges where you can just, you know, sit in the sofa and kind of fall asleep and put your feet up in, which is nice. So very kind of that, that classic, French house style that we have and it's yeah. Wow. It's, it's great. Loads of windows, single pane. What is the average mm. per table that you get in terms of uh, your cocktails? Uh, average like your EPC. The kind of price price range. Yeah, or? what's the kind of price so, range? So 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 our cocktails are around twenty two pounds. Okay, um, that's not bad at all. Yeah, it's it's been kind of chopping and changing here and there with, with what we do and we balance that with the obviously the ingredients we use and you know and, and what we can do for the guests and so on. So yeah, it's 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 forever it's forever changing. Very and, nice. Because mm. every drink of yours has this certain experience. Mm. It's a proper experience that you've kind of associated with the drink. Even in the way that you were explaining it, mm. I could absolutely yeah. <laughs> visualize this visualize it in my head. Mm. It, well, it's fantastic.